Hey guys, welcome to the Learn Feng Shui podcast, where you'll learn feng shui from a classical point of view, taking out the myth and superstition. So if you're interested in learning feng shui, Chinese astrology, all things Chinese and metaphysics, as well as the superstitions and myths that connect it all, you'll enjoy learning feng shui with me. Hey guys, welcome to the energy update for April month of the earth dragon. I also want to add that I'm doing this recording on a new recording software and it's been a little bit glitchy. <laughs> and so bear with me guys, if this audio isn't up to your standards, I'm working some kinks. Let's get into this energy update. I'm Candice Berlanga, certified feng shui practitioner and red ribbon professional with the International Feng Shui Guild. So today we're going to be talking about flying stars, you know, the feng shui for the month, zodiac signs most impacted. And let's look at these seasonal energies coming in. So here we are starting off the month of the Earth Dragon or Wu Shin. April 4th starts off that first solar cycle of energy called the Jie Qi. And it starts April 4th and lasts through April 19th. And it is called Clear and Bright, also known as Qing Ming or Tomb Sweeping Festival. It is a time of year where it's warm enough outside where people are kind of getting out and maybe they want to place flowers on the grave and venerate or honor the ancestors, clean it up. You know, it's kind of good weather for that. So it is a time of year where in Asian and Southeast Asian countries, they do clean and sweep the tombs. Uh, the second solar cycle of energy is called Green Rain, and it lasts from April 19th through May 5th, and it does coincide closely with Beltane, which is a Gaelic uh, festival known as May Day. Maybe you've seen people do the Maypole dancing, and it does mark the beginning of summer. It's kind of traditionally held on May 1st, and it's that cross quarter or midway point between the spring equinox and summer solstice, and according to this solar cycle or solar term, we usually do get a little bit more rain, get those, you know, kind of spring rains around this time. And staying healthy during the solar term, right? So jenniferray.com, which I'll link to below, has an amazing website on Chinese medicine and staying healthy during the solar terms. So I'll link that down below. But uh, here, you know, she just mentions that eating warming foods and increasing your spring foods slowly, eating a little bit lighter and eating more foods that gently cleanse near the spring, like salads and raw foods. I've definitely felt the need to start eating more uh, kind of vegetables that help your, we'll just say it helps the uh, intestines flow, right? <laughs> we'll just say that. Eating simple cooked foods, root veggies, rice and millet, which millet is just like a grain. So maybe some grains, bitter greens, dandelions, artichokes, limit oily and congesting foods and alcohol. And then it says, say, add in more foods that move the chi up and a little outwards to mimic the movement of chi of spring because it is this wood energy. So like sprouts, chives, onions, uh, fennels, it says here, are good. And then really just the self-care, it says we really need to do some exercise, get the chi and blood flowing, circulating. And then vision and planning because wood does represent that future foresight and that future thinking. Uh, regulating your sleep, make sure you're sleeping from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., which is the time that the liver is um, active and in, in cleansing. And it says do movement focusing on the liver and gallbladder. And so it does say to focus on like different stretches and stuff like that, that will stimulate those organs. Uh, and it even says like get creative and dance, you know, pay attention to your dreams. This will help you assess spirits associated with springtime and the liver. If you want more information on that, go to these, uh, this link in the show notes, but all in all, yeah, just keep moving and uh, eating those foods that are a little more clean cleansing to the system is a really good thing to do right now. Maybe even those kind of tea drinks that are cleansing to the gallbladder and liver. I do feel like for some reason, my digestion, and it may just be the season, but yeah, my digestion is not amazing. And I do feel like it's definitely a liver processing uh, thing. So take your digestive enzymes if you're feeling like this too. And one other thing I wanted to note before we move on, um, the big buzz amongst the metaphysical community about the solar eclipse happening on April 8th. It's going to pass really closely to where I live. I won't be able to the path of totality, but uh, fairly, fairly close, at least for Texas standards. <laughs> Texas is huge. So the question is, 
how does this affect me? There was discussion on the International Feng Shui Guild um, online community amongst the practitioners, and I want to kind of share with you what was said. And so fellow practitioner, Jillian Rothschild Scholar, who's been a guest before talking about geopathic stress, did say that she actually wrote about it in her upcoming newsletter. And this is what she put. So, uh, quote, in case you didn't know, according to NASA, a total solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, completely blocking the face of the sun. And so people located in the center of the moon's shadow, when the earth hits, will experience a total eclipse and the sky will darken. So the daytime when the sun is shining, it's considered a yang force. The moon covering the sun becomes a yin force. And during the day when it should be this yang energy. And so what you want to do is avoid the lack of yang energy by staying inside and not exposing yourself to it or give it much attention. So that's from Jillian. And then um, feng shui by Tanya. So Tanya does say that um, she actually did a Facebook live. I'm going to link these ladies below to the resources so you can read for yourself here. But this is what she put here. When the sun is eclipsed and the yang energy temporarily diminishes, it can have various effects on humans and the environment. And it can increase the yin energy representing darkness and receptivity and influences our our mood and behavior, leading to introspection and stillness, especially to those who have more yin pillars in their bata. So how do you know if you have a yin pillar? If you know your natal chart already, uh, have already plotted that, um, if you notice, it'll say like yin water snake. And so those are yin zodiac signs. And so yin water rabbit, you know, the, if it says like yin water, yin earth, yin fire, then you have a yin animal in your zodiac sign too. It just kind of works that way. And so it says here that, um, even animals and birds are sensitive to changes in this light and energy. And so they may exhibit unusual behavior. And if you notice, um, there is a little bit of what they call the Oz effect before the eclipse happens or like during that eclipse time, it'll be like total silence. If you've heard that term before, it's like this total silence, everything disappears. So you will notice that with animals too. And it says here, this temporary shift in the energy symbolizes an imbalance between the yin and yang forces and evokes a sense of primal connection to the natural world and void. It's time to ponder and reflect during this celestial show, especially if you're into eclipses path and consider staying in your space for some quiet contemplation instead of venturing out. So again, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Um, one other thing though, I did want to say, um, there's another consultant here, Lisa Albin, and she does say that, um, she watched it in 2017 and she also had very drastic life changes. It says disruptive changes in my life happened following, but it did lead me to who I am today. And I will say the same for myself. Again, I watched in 2017 and had some earth shattering changes happen to my life. And again, some of those were obviously my choices and actions previous to. And so it will, I think, cause a disruptive change in your life. So if you really want to shake things up in your life, or if you're tired of where you're at in life and need to make some changes, go watch the solar eclipse, <laughs> you know, go, go check it out. Um, again, I'm not, I don't consider myself a very superstitious person. I know I've said it before. Uh, when I was pregnant with my oldest son, there was some sort of solar phenomena, solar eclipse. And I remember my mom telling me if I was going to be out, you know, during the time of that eclipse, it was like lunchtime ish. And I was that, um, she wanted me to wear a safety pin across the front of my elastic on my waist, like by my stomach, you know, by, by my by the baby. And, uh, my mom is the least superstitious, like most religious person. <laughs> and, you know, with her telling me to do that, I was, uh, I guess a little bit alarmed or, you know, I really paid attention because she's not one to, you know, feed into like superstitions, but she's always said that she never watches eclipses and she never watches like the moon, like whenever the moon has, you know, eclipsed by different planets and stuff like that. Uh, because she was told by her grandpa, who's native American, that it's, uh, you know, not desirable to do that. You shouldn't do that. And so, uh, again, leave it up to you, especially if you're in the path of totality, then, I mean, it's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I don't blame you. So I'll leave it up to you, whether it's superstition or uh, whether it really impacts you. All right. Now looking at these lines and which ones will be most impacted here. And the energy does impact you to 
depending on where it falls in your natal chart. So a lot of people know that they have one zodiac sign. Uh, if you're a new listener, you might not know that you have four zodiac signs. And so you actually um, have a zodiac sign for the year, the month, the day, and even the hour you're born. Most people are most familiar with the year. Um, and each one of them represents a different thing. So the year does represent your friend group, social circle, and your community around you. Uh, kind of the that external impact, I suppose. You'll see it in your friend group, maybe. Uh, the month, it does represent your career, your parental relationships, and sometimes your health, sometimes that can impact your health, especially with this double dragon energy. You've got a lot of dragon energy coming in because it's the month of the dragon and the year of the dragon. So we get this double dragon. So the day does represent the health, the romantic relationships, and even the way you perceive yourself, your self-worth. And the hour does represent the uh, children, your relationship with your children, your thoughts, emotions, feelings. And if you are like a manager or you're the boss of a company or something like that, you have people underneath you, it does represent your relationship with your subordinates. Okay. So starting off strong, if you have a zodiac side of a dragon, what can you expect? So we do look at something called the Shinshaw stars. And that's the, the forecast that I give at the beginning of the year where I talk about the different uh, energies for the zodiac signs, you know, the zodiac forecast. And this is where we can look at to focus our attention. So the golden carriage, uh, you have golden carriage for the year. And so this month you might be getting more recognition and financial gain, you know, it could be a thing like that. Um, Duke's arrival attention is on you. And uh, that does offer also a problem solving energy. And so sometimes when attention is on you, that means if you've been doing something weird, you know, if you've been acting, you know, strangely, if you've been doing stuff, you don't want people to know, it might be a time where that comes to light. But if you've been doing good things and you're like, you know what, I'm totally good with the attention on me because that will showcase my talents and stuff like that, then it'll be good for you. Um, and showcasing your talent is good because of the elegant seal. So elegant seal does help you to be able to kind of show off that talent. Yellow flag is just about taking action. Um, the one thing I would warn is the hidden corpse. So secrets revealed or hidden health issues. So if you have any health concerns, please go to the doctor this month or uh, the other connotation, just kind of depending on where it falls in your natal chart. Again, uh, that could be some secrets that are revealed. And so just maybe something you don't want to get out or maybe something is revealed to you. So this kind of like has the connotation of skeletons in the closet. So uh, check out for that uh, this month, month of the earth dragon for you dragon zodiac signs. Which zodiac signs combine to make a seasonal combination? Uh, these are the zodiac signs that make up the season of springtime. So tiger and rabbit. If you have the tiger and rabbit, you do combine with the dragon to make the seasonal combination of spring. And that makes the wood element. And so the wood element is about like making connections, networking. It is self-growth. It's about future thinking. Remember earlier I talked about wood being future thinking um, to kind of you know, just have that forward thinking. What do you plan on doing this year? Maybe you want to plan for your next quarter, you know, we're already coming up to, you know, April and marks the first quarter done. So maybe what do you want to do next quarter or the one after that, you know, um, sign up for a course, go do a certification or learn something new. Cause wood also represents the element of learning or book smarts, you know? So if you're looking to learn something new, and, you know, you are under that sign of the rabbit or the tiger. Could be a good month for you to do that. All right. So if you have the rat and the monkey, you do combine with the dragon to make the element of water, which does represent wisdom and applied knowledge and also the adaptability to your environment. So you can use this energy to put your knowledge into practice and just be flexible in stressful situations and learn to go with the flow this month. Could be your key to navigating all this extra earth energy. And looking at the secret friend or the combination of six is the rooster combines with the dragon and makes the element of metal. And so metal does represent strength, perseverance, and also determination and organization. So making progress on projects, maybe filing your paperwork, organizing and decluttering could be good for you this month, finishing up your taxes. So, you know, April is tax month. And uh, gathering financial information, like kind of getting your paperwork together in order and, you know, filing stuff could be beneficial for you. Or even starting a project that you have been putting off 
for the rooster could be really good this month. Staying organized. And looking at the clashing zodiac sign is the dog. We do have this double dragon. And so for the dog, it could be very overwhelming. A little bit rougher time this month uh, with a double clash. So, you know, it affects everyone kind of different, but usually a clash just means a change. And so you can create the change, you know, they say when you go through a clash, you can do things like moving, just drastic changes. Like if you need to start a new diet, like if your health hasn't been good, then start a new exercise routine. Uh, you can change religions, take up a new sport, like do something different than you usually do. Because when you take control of that clash is like putting yourself in the driver's seat. And so if you put yourself in the driver's seat then you're in control of that, you know? And so just making some kind of change this month for the Zodiac of dog could be really beneficial. Alternatively too, use your East sector to support and combine with the rabbit, like use those combining Zodiac signs. And so the dog does combine with that rabbit. And so, yeah, just using that East sector could be beneficial for you this month. Um, and the East is pretty good. So speaking of East, let's get into the feng shui and look at all those flying stars, you know, which are the best and worst sectors. If you keep up with these monthly updates and need more information, again, don't forget to check out the newsletter. Um, it is available on the website. I'm in transition period with a lot of different things with my business, you know, with this podcast. And so I'm having to transition the podcast recording. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I was recording inside Spotify because when I first started the podcast, that was just the easiest thing. And so I stuck with it. And now I'm having to stretch a little bit and learning some new recording software, which I haven't had to do since Spotify is phasing out their in-app recording. So just kind of some of the technicalities. I'm also having some issues with sending my emails from my website to subscribers um, so there's just, uh, some, some stuff going on with that. So, you know, should I move email subscription services, right? Should I go to MailChimp? I don't even know. Will you guys get my email if you subscribed already? These are all questions I'm having to iron out right now. <laughs> and so, yeah, just some technicalities, but the, um, monthly, that newsletter is available on the website and it has a lot of information in it, including just what I'm doing this month, you know, announcements and stuff like that, uh, podcast topics. Okay. So just always go check that out at learnfengshui.com. And you can always message me with your feng shui questions too. And you know, the floor plan mapping. So uh, don't forget about that and, um, go to the website, learnfengshui.com, check out that newsletter and do subscribe to those emails. There's a lot included in the newsletter that I don't cover here on the podcast. There is, um, I've been doing a practical application. And so last month it was focused on decluttering and I pair that with date selection for lucky dates. And this month it's focused on feng shui for a burial or honoring your ancestors since that tomb sweeping festival is this month. And that's going to be the topic next week. So next week, Qingming tomb sweeping festival and ancestor veneration. So we'll talk a little bit about that feng shui for burial and feng shui for your altar. So I think that'll be a good topic. And then um, the 19th, we're doing a 420 centered episode, cannabis in hip use in ancient China. So just a little fun one here. I know in the US, there's many states that have decriminalized and legalized the use of marijuana. And so I know people do celebrate that. So um, where do you think hemp came from? It came from ancient China. Really interesting stuff. All right, we're gonna do the feng shui and no renovation sectors. All right, now looking at the best sectors for feng shui, what are the areas in your home you're going to want to use? Which sectors uh, can you enhance to get the best result from the month? You know, how can you enhance your actions? I suppose that's always the question of feng shui. And for April, it has a nice little phenomena here. The flying stars actually double. And so they double what they are for the year. And so it's given us some double good energy, I suppose. Uh, earlier, I mentioned the East. So the East sector is a really good sector for this month, if not for the whole year. But this month, that does double up. Uh, the one star does enhance career opportunities and helps to uh, you get things moving along. So if you feel stuck, then this can really be a good area for you to work in. 
So you can uh, work in that sector. Uh, you can place uh, fans. When we talked about doing activations, you can do fans. Uh, and some sectors, you can do water activation. Um, usually for the month, it's easier to just work in the sector or to just place a little fan there. And when I say place a fan, just one of those little personal fans, a little USB fan, just keep it moving in the area or even a little radio. So noise or movement in the sector will activate it. Um, so if you are GWA3, you can expect things to go fast for you this month. So maybe things will start picking up, you know, one of those fast and furious things where the month just flies by for you. Flying star number four here goes to GWA6, the Northwest. So Northwest uh, does have a boost in that academic star. Um, so you can follow that four star around to enhance studying and learning comprehension. So use a sector to study, place a fan. Or, you know, just, just spend some time here. When I say spend time here, do make sure you're studying or actively using the sector, not just sitting there. Knowledge will not automatically come to you. If you are one to use items, you know, you can place your, your uh, items here. There's different items that you can be used for scholarly endeavors. But remember, none of this works without the action. So you still have to do the studying or learning. So if you're studying for some kind of test or something, um, then good for you. If you're a GWA6, um, you'll just kind of have this energy already and you'll be able to enhance your learning ability this, this month. So GWA6s can benefit from this number four academic star. Flying star number six does double in the Northeast for the GWA8. And so the number six generally increases authority and expertise in your area. So this is really, really good if you are ahead of a company, a boss in upper management and stuff like that. So if you have people underneath you, this six star is really good, especially when it goes to the eight, because it makes this a six, eight combination, right? The Gua eight. Um, so Gua eight can expect to benefit even maybe financially this month. So again, it enhances your effort you put in. So if you don't do anything, you won't get the monetary gain. Um, but yeah, pretty good for you this month for the GWA8 or just using the sector um, to benefit, again, a boss or head of a company because that six does represent that. So you can uh, work in the sector or use candles in this sector you can use candles in or place a fan there. And you can benefit from it. The North or Gua One does get the Flying Star Eight, and that is doubled. It's called the Wealth Star, and so uh, that Wealth Star doubling is always a good sign. It's always welcome, you know, um, especially in the North where it falls in that. Um, you know, if you follow the uh, like Western view, where it's um, you know your career sector, you know, it, it can definitely enhance your career. So if you're working towards a promotion or more pay, looking for extra work. Use the North sector. So working in the sector, sending emails, doing cold leads, follow-up uh, can be really beneficial. Again, the eight star, it doesn't just give you like money, but it definitely can increase your workload. So be careful if you are activating or using the sector a lot and you feel like you've just been really busy. So it can actually do that too, make you just feel busy. And I actually do this podcast in the North. My office is in the North. So let's see if I get real busy this month. And uh, again, that is for the GWA one. Um, also. So if you're a GWA1, congratulations. You will have a pretty busy month, you know, with monetary gain. The Southwest does receive the Flying Star 9, and that's doubled again this month. So the Nine Happiness Star is one of the top stars as we enter into this new time cycle of fire, this period nine. And so this month we can get an extra boost from the double nine star. And um, it actually can help with wealth luck in sales. So if you're in sales, then it can be really beneficial for you to activate this sector, work in the sector. Um, you can send emails, do sales calls. If you know work on commissions, definitely work in this sector for the month. And you can definitely use a fan or radio to keep the energy moving also. So yeah, uh, Gua 2s can experience a prosperous uh, time this month. If you do need to move that inventory quick, you know, maybe you post it up online, but you clearance it out and you use that South Sector to, um, you know, work in. So it kind of works that way. And so, yeah, it uh, should be a fairly good month with the stars doubled. Let's look at the worst sectors or like the cures we can put in for the month of April. Looking now at challenging sectors of April, remember the stars do double. And so 
well, that means good energy for the sectors where it has good stars. This could mean challenging energy for the sectors that are already challenged. And so there's not really a need to like cure or fix every one of these energies. However, if you are sleeping in the area, then you might want to be cautious, especially in the Southeast. So the Southeast has a lot going on this year, and it does have that flying star number two, which is called the illness star, but that does double this month. And so if you're having some health issues, you're not going to want to use this sector. Definitely cure it. Try and sleep somewhere else for the month if you can. If you're a Gua 4, take caution because this energy actually will impact you whether or not you sleep in the sector. So it's it's like it's entering your, your home, right? Your palace, your personal palace. And so you just have to kind of be cautious of that. Really check your health and be careful this month, okay? And then we're going to also want to be cautious of the five flying star, which doubles in the West for the month. You are going to want to be cautious also if you're a Gua 7. And so again, the five star is generally called the disaster star. It is a little bit controlled by the metal element. It's just kind of weird to have it doubled is never really a good sign. So you can place a saltwater cure if your bedroom's here. Um, again, if you're a Gua 7, just really be cautious this month. Just be careful and try to limit time spent in the West. Unfortunately, that's my bedroom. And so that happens sometimes. But, you know, I mean, we just cure what we can and enhance the really good stuff. So um, one little trick too, is if you're enhancing the good sectors of your home, you know, you have a good energy coming in. Um, you don't have like shaws on the outside, like weird, like pylons, sharp corners, like you don't have trash piled up outside, you know, old stuff in disrepair, then, um, your internal environment's actually going to be improved a lot too. And it'll lessen the effects of these negative energies. And so you're really going to want to also, um, I don't talk about this a lot, but you do want to look outside and make sure there's not negative forms happening outside. And when I say forms, that is like the sharp corners and the stuff in disrepair and all that. Because if you have that, like, say you had, um, a negative feature or negative form in the West, right? Like we had sharp corners pointing towards the West. Um, then that five star comes in and it doubles, then it could cause some negative energy. So make sure the outside of your house is clean too, you know? And then looking now at flying star seven. So this is called the legal and dispute star going to the South or Guan nine for the month. And again, it is a lot about miscommunication. Um, you know, where is the three star, which falls center? And I didn't really talk about it because it really is not doing nothing. But the three star, as opposed to the seven star, they're both kind of about disputes. But that three flying star is more about like arguments and fighting. And the seven is more about like kind of like a miscommunication, I guess, the speaking part of it, like you're maybe speaking out of turn or you're not speaking right. Uh, whereas this flying star three is more about anger and lashing out. And so um, this flying star number seven could particularly affect the Gua Nine or again, the, the female of the household, like the older female and younger daughter is kind of the connotation that that has. And so, you know, be, be a little bit forgiving to your little one this month. If you, you know, feel like, um, I know kids have attitudes and stuff like that, but you want to make sure that you're just being a little more forgiving, I suppose. Do avoid sleeping in the sector if you're already sick and have a chronic illness because the seven star does represent like a surgical instrument, right? A knife. And so represents you having to go under the knife. You don't want to have to do that either. So um, guanine do take caution of respiratory skin or allergy related illnesses. So keep the sector quiet, place a salt cure if your bedrooms here. And for the year, you can place pottery, stone, and crystals to fill in that gap in the element cycle. And so when we're looking at the sector or the guanine, the south, that's naturally the element of fire, right? It has this fire energy to it and that's always there. And so when the seven goes into it, it's this metal energy. And so fire and metal don't really get along. And so one thing you can kind of do is put those earthen kind of elements, textures, tones, uh, tones of color, uh, yellows and stuff like that to kind of dampen down that energy. You're not going to want to put extra red in the area for the year. And so you can just kind of keep that up all year long. And those no renovation segments, these are known as earth shaws where the flying stars are activated by movement and, uh, you know, stuff like that. The earth shaws or these no renovation sectors are activated by digging major renovations and, you know, 
groundbreaking, stuff like that. And it does only apply to the ground floor of your home or the ground level apartments. So because the energy affects the earth, if you do not have a ground level apartment or unit, then you can safely take renovations um, and you know put those underway, looking at the flying stars instead. And so that's just kind of how that works. So Grand Duke for the month and the year, that double dragon, avoid the Southeast at all costs and do not dig, do not renovate, do not even look at the sector for the month. <laughs> we we don't like it. It's not, it's not happening. And then directly opposing that is that Northwest sector. So the Northwest, uh, it's that soy po or that year breaker, month breaker, um, where that dog resides. So we are not going to want to renovate that sector. And of course the West with that five yellow and then, um, just the South, we're going to want to avoid our innovations also. So, um, the three killings, what's called the three killings that will not kill you. Uh, it just sounds bad. It's more of like can cause issues of like monetary loss or, um, losing, you know, maybe even getting injured a little bit, uh, but not deathly injured, just, uh, you know, maybe you sprain your ankle and you can't work. So you miss out on work and miss out on money, you know, type of thing. So we do avoid um, that Southeast to South and then part of the Southwest for the year. Um, and that is uh, where the goat, the horse and the snake all fall into your home's natal chart. If you need help finding any of these sectors, remember I do that floor plan mapping. So don't hesitate to message me and I can mark that for you if you want to. Uh, if you do need renovations done in any of these sectors, sometimes it can be done using date and time selection um, and sometimes it needs to wait. Okay. But yeah, just message me. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys next week. Don't forget to check out the newsletter, check out the website. And uh, yeah, next week is Feng Shui for altar burial and ancestor worship, as well as that 420 centered episode coming up in a couple weeks. Hemp use in ancient China. For free energy mapping of your floor plan, please check the link in the show notes. To support today's podcast, go to learnfengshui.com, sign up for emails, leave a review, and share with your family and friends. 